All right, this lecture is going to be on the um, CFFI, or C foreign function interface for Python. In some respects, it serves the same purpose as SWIG, and that is we want to have the ability to call compiled C code, um, or C code that's compiled into libraries from Python. SWIG requires you to know at least a little bit of a special syntax to create the SWIG interface files themselves. So the goal of uh, CFFI is to be able to do this with only knowing C and Python, without any uh, reason to learn a third language. So there's two modes to using CFFI, and they're both best illustrated through examples. Uh, there's the application binary interface and the application program programming interface. And the preferred method would be to use the, the API, the application programming interface. But the application binary interface also has some utility um, if, you're, uh, if you already have a compiled library uh, that you want to call functions from uh, without perhaps recompiling the entire library or extracting any specialized C code from it. So um, I think, yeah, I guess the best way to look at these is through examples. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, start with the ABI, the application binary interface. And this would be a situation where you want to load a compiled library. Well, uh, in our example here, we don't have one that we want to load. Uh, so we're going to create our own. So this is a little bit of C code. The name of the file uh, will be called uh, mkl underscore multiply dot C. Uh, we start with including a header file from mkl. So mkl is the Intel's math kernel library. And what we want to do is we want to ultimately call this function um, vdmul. And what this does is it's using mkl's uh, vector math library to do uh, vectorized multiplication. That is, if we have an array x and an array y, uh, each of length n, we want to multiply x times y and store the result uh, in, in the variable result. And so, uh, of course, MKL uh, is, a, is the math library uh, distributed by Intel and will be, on Intel machines, will be very, very fast. It will be uh, quite frankly, as, as fast as any implementation of a vector multiplication uh, because they use, um, uh, they use specialized knowledge of the architecture to implement this function VDMUL. So all, of, all our function MKL multiply is going to do is going to wrap, you know, just generate a real thin wrapper around VDL multiply, the MKL. So, and then, you know, ultimately we want to call this function mkl multiply from Python. And so the arguments are, you know, uh, a constant integer n, that is the length of the two arrays, uh, x and y, well, three arrays, rather, x and y, which are the inputs, and double, which is the output or result. Um, there is a, the, the first argument uh, to vdmul uh, has to be of type, or uh, this, the signature is of type mkl int. And so we, we do a little typecasting here, which uh, takes the integer n that's of type uh, just plain int and does a typecast to a const mkl int, which is mkl int is defined in mkl.h. Uh, it's not really important, but basically, again, what, what is important is just to say that this is a thin wrapper uh, on this mkl vd multiply, which is a, a function that multiplies two vectors x and y. Okay, and so if we execute this, uh, we'll go ahead and write this to the hard drive, and so uh, now we have a file on our hard drive called mkl underscore multiply dot c, and this is the C code that we're going to use to now compile into a shared library. So we know the command, or, or we want to uh, use the command, basically that says, uh, okay, you use the C compiler, GCC, on the file mkl multiply, C, create a shared library. Uh, the output name should be mkl underscore multiply dot so. So this will be the shared library that's created by the compiler. And then we have to specify some include paths. And 
I have um, Anaconda installed in this machine, which is where uh, MKL resides. And so the, the file MKL.h is going to be in the conda prefix slash include. And likewise, uh, the library, in this case MKL underscore RT, which is the library where this function resides, MDL, M, uh, VD multiply, is going to be located in the conda prefix slash lib. So anyway, uh, this is the command that we we're going to use to create our shared library. And if we do that, if we execute it uh, and then list the directory, or, or list the directory uh, looking for anything called MKL multiply, we see uh, we have the file that we created in the, in the first execution. And now we have the shared object or the dynamic library that was created by this command. So now that we have the uh, dynamic library, which that could have all been created outside of Python, now we're ready to run some Python code. So um, here we're going to first do some setup. So we're going to uh, import from CFFI, this is a C4 and function interface, uh, a function called, uh, or an object called FFI, and then we're gonna instantiate that object. And then we're gonna use um, this object and one of its functions called DL open to open a lib open our dynamic library mkl multiply.so uh, and store it as a variable mkl. Uh, the next definition is probably the most important one in this ABI, uh, and that is this is the function um, that we want to share between Python and C. So you can see it's nothing more than just a copy of the function de definition, you know, with the arguments and return values uh, that was came from the C code. Uh, this is useful because you may have a very large library with hundreds of functions defined in it, but only need to call one or two from Python. And so you would just list them here uh, in order uh, of the ones you want to call. All right, so uh, once you execute this, then uh, just a couple of other things. We ultimately we want to call this function mkl multiply, um, and we need to then specify the arguments, right? So we're going to set up some NumPy arrays that are going to serve as arguments to to test this function, right? So we'll start with a n equals to 100, and create a, an a NumPy array that goes from 0 to 100, or, or 0 to 99 rather. Um, X likewise for Y. And the result will be an empty array of the shape of x that we will store the result in. Okay. So um, lastly, because we want to ultimately test the function call only, we're going to do some typecasting here. We're just going to, these are some specialized commands that basically say, because if you recall, the vector x is a NumPy array, which knows its length and has a lot of other metadata associated with it. What we want is just access to the data. And so this FFI from buffer gives us that. It gives us essentially a pointer uh, to the address in memory where the data lies, uh, the data itself, not, you know, uh, not all of the uh, metadata that surrounds it. Okay? And we want to do a typecast to cast that into a const double star, which is what uh, the argument to our C function is. Okay? And we do the same thing for Y and um, for result. So when we execute that, you know, apparently nothing happens, but if we wanted to say, look at what x is, uh, we can see that it's an array that goes from 0 to 99, likewise y is. And ultimately, when we call this function, um, then uh, the result will be the, an element-wise multiplication uh, of the two. Okay. So uh, here we're going to actually test the function. So remember, we stored... Uh, the, the DL open commands, we stored it in a variable mkl, and now this uh, has a function defined in it, mkl underscore multiply, that's going to take the arguments in, uh, x underscore, y underscore, and result underscore. Uh, of course, the result, the, re the result will be stored in, in, in result. So um, if we go ahead and run the time it command on this, we'll see that this takes... Um, 577 nanoseconds on my computer to run. And we can compare that to the timing of NumPy, uh, which, of course, NumPy is also a very fast implementation of um, uh, an 
element-wise multiplication. And in this case, NumPy actually beats it by just a little bit. Now, I think uh, you know these are uh, on this really on the same order because their standard deviations are within the one another. So basically, this MKL multiply as we've defined it here using the ABI example is on the order of the same speed as NumPy. And part of that is because there is some overhead with calling into this library and other things. Of course, both methods are much faster than if you were to uh, just run it in pure Python. So Python, uh, you know, there's three orders of magnitude difference between the your pure Python implementation of the element-wise multiplication, right? But it turns out, we'll see in a second, we can do better. Uh, and it's one of the reasons that the API um, implement the API mode, if you will, to CFFI is uh, a little bit better approach. So here's an example, the same example, the same, you know, same idea, same problem using the API example. And in the API example, we're actually going to create a Python file. In this case, we're going to call it mkl multiply builder.py. And this Python file will run one time first, and it's going to generate the dynamic library for us at the same time that it generates the wrapper um, that we can call from Python. And so the first thing we'll do is um, use this set source, and we're actually going to write the C code here. So remember, before we wrote the C code and stored it in a separate file and sort of compiled it externally to Python. Here what we're doing is this is actually the same C code that was stored in our file previously, and there's no changes to that. But we're actually going to set set using this set source command. We're going to set it up here, uh, and what we want to do is create an interface function called mkl multiply. That's the first argument to this set source command. Um, this command does call mkl, and it needs the header file location. So we do have to specify some arguments, namely the library directories. We can access the conda prefix environment variable like we did before on the command line through Python's OS environment um, implementation. And so basically, this creates the, the library path, the include path, and then the actual library we want to link against, you know, where this function vd multiplies in the mkl library is in, is in this mkl underscore rt. Okay? So this is the actual source code. We've written it right into a Python script here. Um, the next thing is, we're just like before, we're going to share information. You know, so the cdef is where you put the functions that you want to share between C and Python. In this case, it's the only function defined in our library, but nevertheless, that's the case. And then this last statement just basically says, if this, file, if this Python file that we're creating here uh, is called from the command line, then run this uh, compile verbose equals true. And so uh, we'll go ahead and execute that. That writes a file to our hard drive, mkl uh, multiply builder. Now we'll run that file. Uh, we have this special magic function uh, run that was is the same as it's basically saying python mkl multiply builder dot pi on the command line. And so if we run that, then you see it gives us some instructions, right? So it generates uh, mkl underscore multiply dot c uh, in, in the folder uh, that's located here, and it builds this mkl multiply Python extension. Here's the, the command, the GCC command that's automatically generated from the instructions we set up, and then ultimately it creates a shared object that's called mkl underscore multiply dot c python 36 darwin dot so. And so if we, uh, if we list the directory, uh, we can see that it's in fact here and it wasn't there before. So before, all we had was mkl multiply.so. Uh, and, and so that's the previous library that we sort of manually created. And now we have this new one that was created automatically by running this script. Okay. So then with that, we can uh, call our library from Python now. So in this case, we're going to there's a couple of um, functions that are, are, are um, objects that are automatically created by this interface, one of them being FFI, uh, one of them being lib. And in this case, we don't even need the FFI. I could, I could in fact, uh, remove that line. But 
we do need lib, and just to be consistent with what we, we did before, I'm just going to rename lib to mkl. So if we execute this, uh, now we've loaded that into the namespace, and we can test the function. So now, and you notice that we did this with, without any call to DL open, right? So this MKL multiply interface module was automatically created when we ran that builder script. Uh, of course, we only need to run that one time. And now we can call this uh, from Python. And if we look at it, uh, 381 nanoseconds. So in this case, it's actually quite a bit faster, um, roughly two-thirds the speed of the, uh, both the NumPy and the ABI CFFI implementation, okay? And of course, if you just wanted to see the result, there it is, right? So it's just the element-wise multiplication of two arrays that where both of them go um, from zero uh, to 99. And uh, so that is uh, an example of how you use CFFI from within Python. And if you want more information, uh, there is uh, a nice documentation page for CFFI.